welcome back friends in this video tutorial we'll be talking about histones now histones are one of the most uh, important proteins of our body uh, which provides a huge structural role that we cannot see actually but actually uh, without histones uh, nothing is actually possible because histone provides structural role to dna and dna is a blueprint of our life and we know we have very tiny cells and if we consider the complete DNA content of a single cell of our body, it can take up to six feet. It will take six feet of six feet long uh, stretch. But a cell is so tiny that we need to fit this inside, say, one millimeter of diameter, 0.1 millimeter of diameter, something like that. So to, to do this, the only way is to compress the DNA structure, to compress the DNA in such a way so that in a tiny cell, that huge amount of DNA can be stored properly. And the way to do this is 0 0.6 millimeter. This is the condensed form of the DNA. When it does 6 feet after condensation, it will have 0 0.6 millimeter length only. And then it can be stored definitely inside the cell of eukaryotic body. So that is the miracle of histones because this is the role played by histones. They help in huge compression of the DNA. So DNA is wrapped around histone proteins so tightly and elegantly, beautifully. They arrange itself. It's a remarkable structure. If you see it, uh, I probably can't draw in that good manner in this board. I'm just drawing a schematics. But I'll encourage you to go and see some of the images uh, from, uh, from the website, from Google Images or other places. You will find, you will see how beautifully they're arranged to get a proper condensed structure of the chromosome, right? Now, usually, the condensation that we see here is due to histone and other scaffolding protein. And uh, majorly for histone, but next there will be scaffolding protein working and also there will be other kind of condensation. Finally, we will see a chromosome. So much condensed that we can actually visualize it by staining it with some dye and by placing it under a compound microscope. Otherwise, it is not very much visible in all the time inside the cell. It is only visible during the metaphase. Remember, during the metaphase and also interphase se sections when it is prepared for the cell division because during that time the compactness start to arise because all the other times it is kind of dna is kind of unwind why because dna needs to lot of tasks to do like replication transcription translation of the i mean transcription is very important mrna should be produced for that reason uh, this condensation is not possible because if the dna is in condensed form tightly packed form in that case it is less accessible for the transcription definitely so during once uh, all these proteins are made and transcription is done and cell wants to divide then only we see this condensation condition now if you look at the histones clearly it's a protein it's very much abundant protein inside a cell and this histone there are four different types of histone proteins that are available one is h2a h means histone it's a h2b h3 and h4 all these proteins this H3 and H4 have kind of similarity, H2, H2B kind of have a similarity with themselves, but they are different in the structural feature. They have an N-terminal as well as C-terminal domain. And very important task is that they have an N-terminal tail. And that N-terminal tail is very, very important chemically and also for the signaling processes for the control of gene regulation in eukaryotes. Right? And if you see here how they actually arrange. Usually histones are, multi I mean, normally these are the single monomer subunits. Now all the subunits are combined together to form what is called a histone octamer. That means eight of those subunits are organized to form actual protein structure where the DNA is wrapped. Because here in these cases, all of these proteins are taken twice. So two of the H4, two of the H3, two of H2A, two of H2B, total eight different subunits will be arranged. How they are arranged? They are arranged in very simple manner. Let us say H3 and H4, they arrange first. They arrange first. So let me uh, simply draw it. Let us say this is H3, H4, arrange first to form a dimer there. Then what does? What they do is that H2A and H2B comes in. 
H to H to B forms another dimer separately. Remember the scheme. So this happens and this happens separately. So if I draw the event marking strategy, let us say this is the event number 1, this is event number 2. Once it is formed, then the event number 3 is a combination of this 4. Let me change the color here also. This is a combination and what we get here, we get H3, H4 along with H2A, H2B. Okay. So, this is a tetramer that is formed. This is the event number 3. Once that is done, two of such tetramer combine with themselves to form octamer. This is how, this is how exactly the histones are arranged, right? So once they form this octamer, that, that's kind of decision, that's a way to form. Now, now we need to study how this DNA is actually wrapped there. So actually here if you look at, let's say this is the DNA, this green colored section. So DNA comes in and it, it looks something like this. If I draw from this direction, like this. something like that and here somewhere we have those arrangement H3, H4 and H2A, H2B. Now this structure arrangement is important because remember how it actually forms if I draw this octoma let's say this so, so let's say this is how they arrange the arrangement is something like this and in middle there will be histones and this is the dna remember and these are histones okay so if you look at the structural arrangement here this is the way they arrange i mean so the arrangement is like that, not like a spring. So if you look at here, if you look carefully to an arrangement, what you'll find here, if you zoom into one of this arrangement, you'll see a histone octama and DNA is wrapped around it. And in this wrapping portion, DNA is entering from one side, exiting from another side. So this entry and exit side creates a V-like structure here. At those sites, there will be H2A and H2B. On the other side, where there is no incoming and outgoing strands, there will be 3 and 4 of histones. Why? Because histone 3 and 4, they have all these, all of these histones have those N-terminal tails. Remember, I have written here. These N-terminal tails. And among them, the N-terminal tails of H3 and H4 are much more vulnerable. Not vulnerable actually, they are much more designed for chemical modifications. They are called histone modifications. We are going to talk about in details about the histone modifications. You will have a different video about histone modification in my channel. You can watch that video right now by typing it or simply click on the link in the description and also I hopefully put a annotation here. You can click it also. So what it does actually, this N-terminal tail, it, it contains different sections, different uh, nucleotide, I mean not nucleotide, different protein amino acids. Among them, they have a lot of lysines and arginines. They have a lot of lysines and arginine amino acids there. So they have lysine and amino acid, lot of lysine and arginine. So those lysine and arginine amino acids can be easily methylated. They can be easily adding a methyl group to all of this. So they are much more getting methylation as a chemical modification. They can get acetylation, right? They can also get phosphorylation. So th these are the different kinds of modification. Methylation, acetylation, phosphorylation, that may be possible in different N-terminal region of all of these four types of histone subunits. But it is more in case of H3 and H4 because they have a lot of lysine and arginine residues out there. So these modifications are important. Now if we look at here, this protein is helping to wrap all this DNA and then finally this protein is arranged very, very beautifully. Uh, the arrangement is something like this. 
something like this beautiful arrangement as you can see like something like this something like that so let me like that so this is the arrangement remember these are the sections for histones histones are arranged and then they are arranged like this model this is a kind of this is called a, a solenoid model and in this model histones assembling all those dna's in very compact form and this is a string like structure that is formed once the string is formed then that string is further wrapped further coiled with themselves now remember from the beginning if we look at this protein histone and the dna combined together we call it a chromatin chromatin means i call it dna plus protein equals to chromatin so this is a chromatin structure and also this model of wrapping dna around histone is called a nucleosome model because this actual combination is called as a nucleosome okay so this is chromatin this is nucleosome model and then finally this chromatin arrange very tightly to form what is called a chromosome so ultimately chromosome is made with compact chromatin structure arrangement okay now back to this modifications now those chemical modifications are extremely important for the access to the dna i've told you that if the chromosome is tightly arranged if, if this chromatin is tightly arranged every time all the time throughout the cell's life cycle in that case the dna will not be accessible for that cell to access the dna the dna should be unwound from this histone right definitely they should be unwound so for unwinding the dna from the histone these modifications are required so normally it is in compact form inside the cell now when a cell needs to produce an mrna of a particular section which is already wrapped it tags a particular chemical change like let's say this this acetylation of this h3 and h4 tail happens after that that section of the dna is released from the histones histones just dissociates and then the rest of the process transcription will take place after the transcription again the histone will assemble associate right and these histone proteins are kind of housekeeping genes because they are produced throughout the time throughout the cell they are produced very in small amount in throughout the time and new histone proteins are generated and old histone proteins are also recycled during the replication because during the dna replication dna needs to unwind and everything needs to separate so during that time also old histones are dissociated and also new histones coming there and also some of the old and new histones combined together to form this histone octama right so that in a sense is histones the structure of histones and how histones uh, function in our body right so if you like the video hit the subscribe button because subscription is obviously important to get more videos like this and also like the video share this video a lot with your friends and put some comments out there it helps us doing more and more video like this for you thank you